Hello, today I'm going to be unboxing and giving you a first look at the Z890 Aorus Elite XI. So if you're thinking of doing an all-white build, this may well be the motherboard for you. So let's go ahead and get it unboxed. So this is everything that comes in the box with our motherboard. So we've got some paperwork including our user guide, we've got some Aura stickers, we've got the antenna for our Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.4, we've got a front panel connector adapter, we've got two SATA data cables, we've got two temperature sensor cables and we've got a noise detection cable. Taking a closer look at the motherboard and working along the bottom from left to right, first of all we've got a HD audio connector, then we've got an LED demo header followed by three RGB headers. We've got two 3-pin 5-volt addressable RGB headers and a single 4-pin 12-volt non-addressable header. We've then got a trusted platform module header followed by two USB 2.0 ports. We've then got three system fan headers followed by our system panel header. This is where you're going to plug in your front panel connectors and we've also got chassis intrusion, power LED and speaker headers. And we've got a clear CMOS jumper just above this. Working up the right hand side of the motherboard, first of all we've got four SATA ports, followed by a right angled USB 3.2 Gen 1 header. Just above this we've got a HDMI 1.4 port, which you'll find useful if you want to go with an internal screen on your build. We've then got a front panel Type-C header, which can support speeds up to 20 gigabits per second. And then we've got a noise detection header. Just above that we've got two system fan stroke water pump headers, and behind this we've got two temperature sensor headers. We've then got our 24 pin power connector and at the top of the motherboard we've got our postcode status screen and our debug LEDs are just to the right of this. Working along the top of the motherboard we've got three buttons. The first is our Q Flash Plus button which you can use if you want to flash your BIOS. Next to this we've got a reset and power button. We've then got our motherboard's third and final 3 pin 5 volt ARGB header followed by our CPU fan and CPU opt header. At the top left of the motherboard we've got two 8 pin EPS power connectors and just beside it we've got our motherboard's sixth and final system fan header. The motherboard features a 16 plus 1 plus 2 twin digital VRM design and we've got large aluminium heat sinks over the VRM. In the middle of the motherboard we've got our brand new LGA 1851 socket and standard mounting holes. We've got four RAM slots and the motherboard will accommodate up to a maximum of 256 gigabytes of DDR5 at up to 9500 mega transfers per second overclocked. We've got 3 by 16 size PCIe slots and it's good to see that the top slot is reinforced. This is our Gen 5 slot and it will run in by 16 mode with the PCIe lanes coming from the CPU. The middle one will run in by 1 mode, the bottom one in by 4 mode. PCIe lanes for these slots come from the chipset. And pressing on the Easy Latch Plus button over to the right hand side of the RAM is going to release the clip in the top PCIe slot. The motherboard has 5 M.2 SSD slots and the good news is installing your M.2 SSD is going to be completely toolless. So our top slot is a Gen 5 slot with the PCIe lanes coming from the CPU. While the bottom 4 slots are Gen 4 slots with the PCIe lanes for one of them coming from the CPU and the other three from the chipset. As you can see installing and removing your M.2 SSDs from the sockets is also completely toolless. Taking a look at our rear I.O. we've got 10 USB Type-A ports. The white ones are USB 2.0 ports. The blue ones are USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports supporting 5 gigabits per second speeds. While the red ones are USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports supporting 10 gigabit per second speeds. And we've also got a single Thunderbolt 4 USB Type-C port. In terms of networking we've got 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port and we've got the antenna for our Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.4. At the bottom we've got our audio connectors and we've got a line out, mic in and SPDIF ports. The motherboard's using the ALC1220 codec and it supports 7.1 channel HD audio. So I do think this is a really nice motherboard and it'll work great for an all white build. In particular with this generation it's great to see that our top Gen 5 M.2 slot doesn't share PCIe lanes with our graphics card anymore and I think it was a sensible decision Gigabyte took not to try out extra Gen 5 slots that shared PCIe lanes with it. In terms of pricing the motherboard is currently up for pre-order and in the UK it's going to cost you just less than £300. 
So hopefully you're going to be seeing this on the channel soon in a build. If you have enjoyed this unboxing and overview video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well. And a big thanks to Oris for sending the motherboard out. Thank you.